Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Bogey Proof. We got all four of us on the Bogey Proof staff here today. We got Matt, Eric, Joey, and myself, Mike. Uh, we're going to start off like we usually do and uh, tell you guys all what we're sipping on. Joey, what do you got out there down in Florida for us? And up tonight, not not my night for drinking, boys. Uh, we got water. Mikey, what about you? I am drinking a nice, cold, refreshing polar cranberry lime seltzer, uh, representing a little local business based out of uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. So, you know, support local businesses this time of year, guys. So, uh, you know, I didn't really want a glass of wine. I didn't want a glass of bourbon, you know, and it's Tuesday night when we're doing this. So I'm just sipping and keeping hydrated. That's, that's Thank you, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> Eric, what do you got down there in Virginia? Uh, so you mentioned Tuesday night. So for me, Tuesday night is kind of like Sunday night. Um, <laughs> so I'm drinking some wine, um, had a little pasta for dinner. And uh, I've got uh, Robert and Davi bourbon barrel. Um, and uh, yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. Pretty simple bottle. Uh, Matt, what do you got over there? I went with wine myself tonight. You know, had got like this package of like dozen bottles for like a hundred bucks some coupon i got through work or whatever and this guy it's some kind of red wine out of portugal there's no more description than that on the bottle it just was like some weird art face guy it was kind of off the grid but i'll put a picture up later for the people to see back home but i don't know red wine from portugal tonight so that's what we're sipping on up here in connecticut you know getting ready for the holidays and whatnot so before we do that let's recap you know this last weekend's golf right so we had the pnc championship with which had, you know, social media buzzing with uh, young Charlie Woods, even though the Woods family did not come out on top. That was, you know, Justin Thomas and his dad, kind of like we had talked about the week before, by far the best player in the field. So not overly surprised with that. Um, but, you know, before we kind of brush over the PNC, there's definitely some stuff to talk about coming out of there. I mean, Charlie Woods not only, you know, met expectations, I think he blew <laughs> them out of the water. I mean, it was very, everybody was very cautious about, you know, going too crazy leading up to it with the fact that he's 11. Right. So we talked about, you know, he, he's just supposed to have fun, right. He's 11. Let's not get too excited here. And he came out absolutely firing. I mean, I don't know how much you guys got to watch on Saturday specifically with just kind of, you know, that kind of buzz and a little nervousness leading up to it. But I was floored every time I was watching him hit a shot or whatever, it was just overly impressive with, I mean, everything was flagged. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, when I was 11, like, I don't know. I, I played pretty, I played a decent amount of golf by the time I was at age and, you know, it was halfway decent from what I thought. But I mean, I remember like topping shots, duffing shots, chunking them, throwing temper tantrums out there, like the whole, the whole nine when I was 11 and he was just a, a killer already. It's unbelievable. So I don't know how well you guys have for thoughts on Charlie, but I was overly. I mean, the the biggest thing that stood out to me about Charlie was his, his mannerisms in between his shots, after his shots, before his shots, he, I mean, he looked like a pro out there. Yeah. I mean, obviously he's Tiger's son. He's learned a lot just by watching his dad, but just kind of his composure after some of these great shots that he hit and the nonchalant club twirls that he mixed in and kind of just the, the straight face that he had on after he made an Eagle, like this is business um he he definitely showed kind of like a little bit of that mental side of the game that tiger has that x factor almost and like you said he's 11 years old i mean god only knows what's coming for him in the next like four six years once he gets into some serious amateur golf um it's going to be pretty awesome to to watch him compete at the highest level in the years to come yeah i got to yeah it. I got to catch a good amount of it on Saturday, but I mean, like you're saying, just to see how composed he was, like, I know there's no spectators, but there's people there watching and like, he's 11 and it just didn't even face him. I mean, I go out there with a couple of members watching me. I freak the hell out. I don't, I, I don't know how he does it. It's just, he's so composed and it, it was unbelievable to watch him and everything that you guys said was spot on, but you know, I will say our take on what we thought would be the best part of his game, which, you know, we said putting, I, I would say, I would probably say from what I saw, at least it was probably the worst part of his game, which kind of shocked me, but you know, it was, it's still good. He'd still beat me lights out any day of the week. I don't care, but yeah, it was unbelievable to watch him and I'm looking forward to watching him from years, hopefully for years to come. 
It was incredible. I'm surprised, I mean, surprised Tiger. I'm surprised Tiger allows him to use a mallet putter. Yeah, right. Yeah, I didn't even think of it like that. I was just like, oh, he's using a spider. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> Justin yeah. Lennon or whatever in the coverage was like, yeah, you know, I was talking to him on the putting green. I grabbed his putter, and the putter is, you know, 70% grip and 30% shaft. <laughs> like, just so cut down, but he's got, like, a normal – he's got, like, one of Tiger's grips on. He's got that ping one that Tiger had forever. I mean, just – unbelievable stuff and like you said his putting he puts like an 11 year old he just hammers it on his exactly. line <laughs> which i yeah, mean it's, like good it's good i don't know if you caught anyone they were talking about it how like they put you know, Char- tiger put charlie in a set of blades to start and like everyone was like oh my god are you kidding me it's like what do you expect him to do that like are you kidding me when i have a kid i'm doing the same exact thing that's only how you get good yeah, it's just it's, it's not that people were didn't believe that <laughs> I know Tiger doesn't have a set of like those those Cleveland ones that are all hybrids all throughout. He doesn't have any of those lying around the house back in back in Jupiter, Florida. I think it's all it's all old blades. I would love to know which like model irons he was actually using though. They did say, however, like leading up to that tournament, Tiger did switch Charlie into like a more forgiving iron. Yeah. Like, you know, you, I think it? I saw he's using the same. I don't know which one he's using the same uh, tailor made iron that Morikawa and Matt Wolf both. I think those are the 770s. I'm not yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And he was probably using the normal blades. Sicko. Imagine that. 11. 11. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fontaine, outside of, I mean, I know Charlie Charlie Woods was definitely the story out there and um, definitely got a little bit of work to do on the putting green, but just a free-flowing golf swing and that driver is just pounded down the center, you know, pretty much every single time. I thought it was awesome to watch Tiger just – you know, hang back on the back tee and just <laughs> when he saw that Charlie went down the middle, just, you know, you know, gave him a thumbs up and s- started walking down. I thought that was a lot of fun. Power moves. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't need that one yet. I'll save that. <laughs> so good. But uh, out, outside of Charlie Woods, you know, what kind of, what kind of stole the show for you this weekend, you know, specifically on Sunday? Um, Sunday was the coverage. I mean, <laughs> Everybody talks about it, right? It's like the hot buzz. It's like the easy, low-hanging fruit, whatever you want to call it, buzz item in golf these days, it seems like. But, like, I don't know. I, they say the contracts, blah, 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 whatever. Like, no other sport tells you about the contracts, given them issues. Like, if they're playing golf, put it on TV. I don't know how – or, like, put it on one of the other features that we pay for, right? Like, PGA Tour Live or whatever. You know, they have all those extra subscriptions where you can get, like, the early round coverage or whatever it is like and a lot of people pay for that but like then they have an event like this on sunday especially after how amazing saturday was right ton of coverage charlie was awesome like you know every the buzz is going at the tournament and then you go out sunday the tea times were earlier they're all out by 10 instead of like i think 12 or whatever the day before whatever not that big a difference but when it's there's only 11 teams it makes a difference and like you can't see anybody till tigers on 16 it's like <laughs> How do you let them just dominate social media Saturday? Huge buzz, all this awesome stuff. Charlie's killing it. You know, the, the numbers, there's birdies, eagles everywhere from not only the team Woods, but, you know, Kucher and his kid and all, they shot like 56 the first day or something stupid. And then, you know, Sunday rolls around and now they've got everybody's attention. Everybody wants to see it. And then it's like, oh no, not till two or one thirty on Peacock or whatever. I don't even know. I was... When I went to try to watch it when they were playing, I couldn't find it. I just was like, I'm dumb. I'm done with this. For today. Like, I was, like, so pissed. Like, I'm seeing all these highlights from people that are, like, at the event on Twitter or whatever, like, media members and whatnot, throwing out a little video of, you know, Charlie fist pumping on three or whatever it is, you know, stuff like that. And it's like, how can I not watch this? Like, how is this not available? Like, I go to Golf Channel, and they're showing, like, this Nota Begay Junior Championship at noon. I'm like – how is this getting coverage? And you have like, you have a live tournament happening. Like play the note of a gay thing next week when there's no golf on or the week after that, or, you know, like, play golf, was, not fucking baffled. that. I was baffled. And then like, I, I don't know. It's, it happens all the time. Like with golf where it's like, you just can't provide it to people, especially on the weekends. I understand Thursday, Friday, people are working. So it's like, you don't want to pay to have that coverage when it's like not a full audience is going to be able yeah. to embrace it or whatever. But like on the weekends, like have them be through PGA tour live, or whatever, just provide coverage. The second a ball is teed up on the first hole, 
and like a T, you know, like, I don't know, golf just needs to figure that out. It's like, you're one of the, I mean, it's a major four or five, whatever sport, like it's on the lower end of that spectrum, obviously. It's like, how but do you grow? And how yeah, do you grow like, even more if you don't exactly. take it. advantage of something like this in a, in a downtime yeah. when it's not major championship time of year, it's not whatever. And like throw this on the TV for people to watch like Charlie and whatever. Like I have people texting me that never talk to me about golf, <laughs> like my friends, or whatever, that don't really care about golf. And they're like, dude, how do I watch Charlie Woods right now? Like they see all this stuff on social media or whatever. And it's like, I don't know, man. It's like, I shouldn't have to say that. Out. Let me know. <laughs> Yo, like, you just got to subscribe to PGA Tour Live, do the three month trial and then cancel it. Like, I don't know, like I should have an answer that they can do whether they have to pay for it or not. But like, I had no answer. I was like, I don't know. It's not there. I don't know. And it was just, it's just it, not there, <laughs> especially on the Sunday. Like that's the day of the tournament. Nobody even got to see team Thomas until they're on the 13th hole. It's like, well, they already were 13 under. So you missed half the day. It's like, you know, it's just like, I don't know. It's what did they a, end up going to shoot in that five hour, hour, five hour window? And they showed two hours of coverage ridiculous what did team thomas end up shooting that final round i saw their eight under on the front what did they do on the back the yeah 50, 57 <laughs> that's awesome yeah, yeah ridiculous but yeah outside of the outside of the pnc we had uh we had a couple other tournaments going on we had the the cme uh the tour championship on the lpga tour this week uh Jin Young Ko, one by five, 18 under. Close competitor was 13 under. Just absolute great golf the entire week. Um, and just, you know, killed it on on Sunday. And, you know, she had only played, what was it, four four events this year on the LPGA Tour and, and like ended that. up winning the money title, which is absolutely crazy. I know it was back-ended with a bunch of cash at the end of the year, um, you know, with the U.S. Open and with this. But, you know, great to watch and, you know, fun to watch two straight weeks at Tiburon. Um, you know, having Jason Hattie on, on the friends of the program, but, you know, a couple of weeks ago and then watching that golf course for a couple of times was, was a lot of fun, uh, you know, but besides that, we had a couple other, you know, high level things that happened. LPGA tour Fontaine, could you uh, fill us in on a couple of the year end awards that happened? Yeah. So, you know, like Mike said, they gave out, obviously it was their version of the tour championship, their CMA, their CME, they call it. And, you know, uh, Jin Young Ko got the money title and like you said, back in with us open being the biggest us open purse. And then this past week is a huge purse for them as well. And she was T2 and then one. So she, you know, made her, made her cash pretty well there, but uh, Danielle King got the scoring title for the year and somewhere in the coverage, they, they were kind of throwing some shade at it because, you know, of the dominance of someone like Jin Young Ko, she only played in four tournaments, but played so well. And then a handful of other players that were kind of, impacted due to COVID and didn't get the number of events required or whatever it may be that were kind of snubbed from being in that conversation or kind of being able to cha challenge Danielle King this weekend. Um, but, you know, regardless of all that, I mean, Danielle King played some really, really, really good golf on the LPGA Tour this year. I think she won three times. I want to say she had back-to-back -back wins at some point, and I don't know how many she got to total for the year, but played some really awesome golf. So, she definitely deserves that, you know, scoring title for the year at honors, you know, whether it could have been challenged or whatnot or more dramatic this week, I guess, is probably what they were really trying to get at just because she kind of basically had it in the bag going into the week. Um, but also, you know, Se Young Kim got player of the year who she played really well again all year too. I think she won, I forget which major, but she won the either the a and or I think it was the A&A inspiration or whatever that, that one is that she won and then won a couple other tournaments along the way and, you know, couple top five finishes in the U S open. And then, you know, this tour championship. So a lot of good golf out there in the LPGA tour the last few weeks, uh, like I had mentioned before, like never really too into it, but, you know, given the weird time of year it fell on and just, you know, really craving to watch some golf with the weather outside, really not cooperating, really got some buzz going and really excited to see kind of follow that along next year, a little bit more closely and watch some more majors and whatever else may come from it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think the CME classic dart CME tour championship was, was a lot of fun to watch and kind of a cool way to kind of, you know, end the year on a, on a great golf course and a big purse. Um, very get, fitting. Got to get back to Tiburon gold now, like watching it the past, well, seeing clips, at least seeing it the past two weeks just makes you want to go back and play it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think all of us need to need to get out there on Tiburon relatively soon. And then, you know, besides CME tour championship, we had the European tour was finishing up in Abu Dhabi. Um, Lee Westwood, 
I don't know how old he is, 65, 70. Uh, feels like he's been on tour forever. Uh, took care and, you know, and, and won player of the year for the fourth time on the European tour. I believe finished second in the actual tournament. Matt Fitzpatrick um, won the, the actual tour championship over there, the actual golf tournament. And uh, interesting that, that he won that. He's caught, kind of caused a little bit of, um, you know, controversy in the media this year, just with the, the whole distance game. And he's made some comments about Bryson and, you know, how he thinks that, you know, the game of golf kind of needs to change. Um, just to kind of bring the fields back together. And so interesting that, you know, he was able to, to kind of take the cake at the end of the year and, you know, get it done out there. So we'll be watching, see how he plays and, you know, the, the following year, and he's probably going to be on that Ryder cup team for, from team Europe. So uh, interested to watch him uh, here in 2021, but uh, you know, Eric, could you, could you let the listeners know where else they could, uh, you know, listen to our podcasts or, you know, or see our YouTube videos, just kind of fill them in. Yeah. So we've, uh, pretty much spread out a lot of our content across, uh, across quite a few platforms at this point. Um, podcasts can be found uh, every episode on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and then also uh, Amazon Music. So kind of the three main uh, music podcast platforms there. Uh, blog, bogeyproofblog.com. We're going to be kind of firing up the, the blog pretty heavily here in the new year and um, bringing in a bunch of different perspectives to you, whether it's golf, like professional golf or our own golf experiences or going on trips somewhere, we're going to be kind of going to the blog there for some of that content. Uh, Instagram, uh, bogeyproof.gram. Uh, just kind of with Instagram, we're updating you with, with what's going on with what we're doing with bogeyproof and similar to Twitter, bogeyproof.tweets. Uh, Matt is, uh, is the brain power behind the, the Twitter and, uh, especially if tigers on the golf course, there's that's, that's a can't miss um, platform of content right there. And then uh, every episode is also available in video form on, on bogey proof. And then hopefully down the road, maybe we'll, we'll throw in some, um, some live golf of our, of our own on the YouTube, but those are the main main platforms that you can find bogey proof proof right now. And hopefully uh, we can, we can grow all of them um, in the coming months and the coming year. Absolutely. Don't uh, disclaimer. Don't expect me to be rational when Tiger Woods is on the golf course through Twitter. <laughs> Everything will be most likely all caps. Um, I will always take his side. I'm gonna just get all that. I'm gonna get in front of that. So like, don't be coming at me on the Twitter and be like, "What are you talking about?" That was hit to 20 feet when I say he flushed it. Like he flushed it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Like <laughs> disclaimer. Like that. That's just if you're coming there and Tiger's playing. Just be patient. I'll get to the other golf too, but Tiger, if Tiger's hitting shots, I'm always taking his side on what he does. So that's what's going to happen on Twitter. We'll, we'll keep it classy and neutral, you know, on the other platforms, but on the live tweeting of, you know, Tiger grounds, that's, that's just what's going to happen. So. And favoritism yeah. will be played. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Not so. so. As we're in kind of like the, the week of Christmas guys and the we're heading into the, the end of the year here, um, I think we, we thought it'd be a good idea to talk a little bit about some of our most memorable moments from 2020, whether it was on the golf course or something that involved golf or um, a great drink we had. I think it would, it's nice to kind of recap some of the highlights we've had, especially in as crazy of a year as we had in 2020. Um, so kind of just to, to start it off and, and around the horn, kind of just some of our most memorable moments of the year, specifically most memorable single round of golf. I think all of us played more golf this year than we have played in the last few years, at least in our whole life. And um, if you can pinpoint that most memorable single round of golf, I think it would be uh, pretty interesting and pretty, pretty cool to talk about. So Joe, why don't you lead us, lead us off? Uh, what was your, do you, do you have a most memorable round of golf from the year of 2020? Yeah, I am. Um, you know, um, I'm, I'm, Luckily, being in this business, it it gives me some opportunity to see some really good golf courses. Um, you know, still haven't seen majority of the ones you want to see, but that's always the case. But I would say my most memorable round this this year was would be this summer, and it was up in New Hampshire. I was playing Bald Peak Colony Club, and you know, I just call them up and see if I can get on. And they said, "Yeah, come on over." So I go out, go head up there. It's an hour and a half drive, but 
plan on playing by myself, ended up getting paired up, you know, with this probably middle-aged couple who are complete hacks, but, you know, I had probably one of my better rounds of the, you know, of the year. And, you know, it's, it, it goes to show how much you, you kind of appreciate a golf course a little bit more when you can play well there. Whereas, you know, you go to a great golf course and play bad. You just, it's, it's not as memorable of an experience. Right. And I'm able to remember this round so well, because like I said, it was some of the better golf that I've played. Like, I mean, I almost had five birdies in a row and that doesn't really happen too often. I, I didn't, I had three. So, I mean, that's something. Yeah, I mean the he's kid just got. Five. What's that? He checked. Three's almost five now. We're skipping four. Yeah, time. yeah. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it was it was a fun round. I mean, unfortunately, the beginning was a little rocky, but that's usually my golf game right there. So I, I would definitely say that's one of my most memorable rounds this season for sure. I, absolutely, and I mean, so, I, what's that? I was gonna say that that comment reminded me of like an elementary school kid saying like I'm almost five years old well how old are you I'm three and a half <laughs> <laughs> well you you know how it is though but I mean it's when you got a hot streak of golf you get high and it was it doesn't happen as often as I would like so I mean to say I almost had five but and it's not like I I almost made the putts they just missed I still remember them so <laughs> in my mind I made them you know? I hit my putt. It just didn't go in the hole. So, I mean, what are you going to do about it? But uh, no, it's definitely a golf course I, I I hope to get back to. I hope to bring you boys there one day. It's uh, It was definitely, you know, I think something that made it also so special because, like, it's a colony club, they call it. And, like, you drive in, and it's, it's not exactly like the bundled communities you have down in Florida, but it's similar, and they have their own houses, and it's overlooking Lake Winnipesaukee was just you know it was something that I've never really seen before and I, I you know I really admire the place and the golf course was one of, you know I wouldn't say it'd probably be up in my top 10 at least or something like that so I mean it's I would definitely say that's my most memorable round of the year for my single round of the year but uh Michael what about you good sir yeah and I'm trying to remember the specific day if it was April 29th or May 8th was the day that they allowed golf back in the state of Massachusetts. So that was my single best day of golf was, you know, we were shut down for pretty much the entire month of April. Um, And, you know, we actually had some decent weather here in in March, kind of at the beginning of of COVID as well. Um, And we weren't able to play golf because they shut everything down for the whole, the whole month of April. So in my opinion, I think the, the best single round of golf was, it was at Cedar Knob Golf Club. Just a little, you know, hole in the wall place in, in Summers, Connecticut. Fun golf, fun golf course, but nothing special. Some bad holes, um, but definitely, definitely a decent test and a good group of guys out there. But yeah, I just think the best single round was when we actually had an opportunity to get on the golf course. It was like they had freed, fuck, they had freed, you know, caged animals and they let them, you know, roam the <laughs> roam the earth, you know. So I think it was just, it was such a great time. And we just like, we didn't want to go home. I just remember that day we got to the golf course, like an hour and 15 minutes early. Usually I was playing with my dad and a couple of other guys. Usually when I play with my dad, we show up like 12 minutes before our tea time, you know, <laughs> if, if we're lucky, we show up like an hour and 15 minutes before we we're just like chipping around, like on the tee box, we were like looking around, we were giving high fives. Like it was, maybe it wasn't high fives cause it was COVID, but it was like, you know, air knuckles and stuff like that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we just went out there and had a great time and hung out in the parking lot for a while after and just didn't want to go home because it was just it was just great to be back on the golf course and enjoying ourselves. But uh, Mr. Fontaine, can you kind of pinpoint one uh, one single round this year that was the most memorable for you? It's going to be tough. I, I like like I've said before in like some of the early episodes, I mean, I played more golf, like actual rounds of golf this year than I have in probably since college when we were playing, you know, way too much, like five, six times a week. Um, but if I had to pinpoint one round, I was going to do something with the COVID thing, Mikey, cause you know, like I said, I was in up in new England too. And we were kind of locked down for a while. And that first, those first couple rounds out was just like, yeah, you're just hitting the ball and chasing it. You're not even thinking about numbers or anything like that, which was just, cause you just, like you said, you're giddy. You're just want to be out there. You're turning a four hour round into a six hour round, just getting there, like I said, an hour early when you normally get there 20 and all that stuff. So, but I'll go a little different avenue just to, you know, mix it up here. But 
I think honestly, for me, my single best round was like our, was it the, whatever our championship match round was at the Bon Tempo. I mean, personally for me, like, you know, you know how to do what you need to do, especially at a golf course like that, where it's all right in front of you. There's no tricks to this local muni we were playing at, but very rarely in golf, especially in competitive golf, do you play well when you want to play well like that almost always gets in your way more often than it like actually happens and you know for that few days there and specifically that round like I just did like I was just able to execute better than I've really ever executed golf in like my entire life like I didn't miss many shots and when I did I was able to like recover pretty well or whatever it was or take advantage when I hit good shots that I don't know for me that I've just never been able to really execute as well as I wanted to, especially in a competitive round. I mean, when you're playing with your buddies or whatever, you usually play pretty well because it's a more relaxed environment or whatever, but being in a tournament and whatever and being like, okay, knowing what you need to do and then having to go do it is like two totally different things when it comes to competitive golf. And for me, that's the best I've ever been able to do what I was putting, you know, you do, you play it through in your brain a million times when you're getting ready for those tournaments or you know, the night before, whatever it is. And to be able to actually do what I was trying to do once was like, that was the best for me. This time. That was like all time. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever execute like that again for, <laughs> for that many holes, you know, that was probably the best golf I've played personally, but that was by far my favorite, like single round because it's probably one of my best rounds of golf I've ever played. Eric, what about you, big guy? Um, I'd say I'm going to, I'm going to go with Mike and kind of relate it a little bit to COVID and first round of golf that I played once COVID kind of was a, a real thing here in Virginia. So I think it was, I think it was March, March 18th, uh, a day or two after some of the, like the first COVID restrictions went in Virginia. Um, luckily for us different than, than Massachusetts golf courses never closed here in Virginia, but um, March, March, I think it was March 18th, out, uh, a, a local, local public golf course with some friends here in Charlottesville, old trail golf club. Um, and it was just a, it was a beautiful day early in March. It was 75, 80 degrees. And, uh, we just really had a good time. And, um, I'd say it's the most memorable cause we had no idea what was coming the next few months, mm. um, and what we were about to deal with. And, and we, we thought that maybe that, this was going to be something we were dealing with for, for two weeks, three weeks, a month or so. And um, then we'd be back to normal. But I'd say that was the, the most memorable round of golf this year for me. Um, just given everything that happened after that one round of golf. And we, we didn't really know what was coming after that one round of golf. Um, we were out there for, for four hours, kind of escape from the world a little bit and have a good time. And yeah, little did we know um, that, still in in the end of december would be would be talking about it eric um was it this year that we played at um shoot what's it called royal new kent was that earlier this year that was this year that was in um <laughs> that was before that was in, as well was that april no that was that was that was in april something like that but i mean i would definitely yeah. i'd put that one up there as well i mean a five-hour uh, round going on the course. I mean, definitely, yeah, definitely me played, memorable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> what you talk memorable about good forty degree it. weather, rainy and wet, and it was, you know, it says as close was, to Ireland as you'll get, but it's a linksy, long-style course. We played probably uh, two sets of tees up, and it still felt like 7,000 yards. I mean, it was a monster of a golf course, and I mean – I remember we, I mean, we all hit the ball decently. It just, none of us yeah. could get around though. And like we were saying it, like I was just saying, it, would, it was a five hour round. We were the only ones on the course and we were playing golf. You know, you go hit the ball, do it again. We weren't driving around. It was just, I'll never forget that round. It was just, it was absolutely nuts. That, and then I'd love to go back to the course and try to redeem yeah. ourselves. But at the same time, oh, I don't yeah. want to punish myself that badly again. <laughs> That's all you need to know is that it was a five hour round and we were the only ones on the golf course. <laughs> on the 18th, so this place, we all, it's a nice little peninsula green and it literally, we all just dropped balls and tried to hit the green and it was so windy. It took us like six shots each to get one up there. It was ridiculous. So, yeah, it was, I think it was 
the actual temperature was like 36, 38 <laughs> degrees, 40 mile an hour winds. Um, and for, for those of you that don't know, this golf course, Royal New Kent in Virginia is designed by Mike Strantz, the same guy that designed Tobacco Road. And wow. so if you were to, to take, if you were to take Tobacco Road and say, let's go throw it in Ireland, that's what this is. But in Virginia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the sounds of it. It's just weird enough. Like, I love Oh, it. yeah. I would love to go play it on a day where I could feel my hands, yeah. where I wasn't yeah, wearing yeah. layers. The um, <laughs> probably took us 30 minutes. Not even a joke. Yeah. A little no, dumb. That, that's last very true. Know where one of us hit it. We didn't know where the hole was going. It was just, <laughs> I, I need redemption at that place. That's for sure. Yeah, maybe maybe in the fall, Joe, when you're on your way back down, or when you're in the in the spring, when you're on your way back up, we'll get some some nice weather this time around, and, and we'll try it again. I, I'm up, I'm about it. I got some other courses in mind that I <laughs> need to maybe get to, but so so I'd say, I mean, I'd say all in all, even with the poor weather, Royal New Kent is a is a pretty cool setting yeah. and a pretty cool. I mean, even like the the practice green out behind the clubhouse there is pretty much 360 degree views of, of some cool um, topography and stuff with the golf course. And then going back on 2020, recapping some of our best moments, 2020, is there, uh, Joe, is there, are any moments in, in 2020 that stand out to you where you're kind of just standing there, maybe you had a drink in your hand or you're just looking around and kind of, this was, that was the best setting that you kind of found yourself in this year. It, it maybe involved golf. Maybe it didn't involve golf. Um, and, and what was that setting? What was that, that drink that you had in your hand or the company that you're sharing it with? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I wish I could say I had a drink after that bald peak round, but I ended up just hitting the road right afterwards. But, um, I wouldn't say any specific moment, but you know, like recently I went and met up with one of my members from the club I work at up North and, Play, met with him down here in Florida and played his course there. And, you know, it's just sitting down after the round and just having a beer, nice IPA or something like that, catching up, going over your round and just, you know, keeping small talk with him and, you know, just having a good conversation. I, it, stuff like that is, you know, reasons why I love the business. And, you know, it's it, it keeps me in the business and keeps me going. I mean, I am fortunate to do what I do. And like I said, that's just kind of a reward to me. Um, no specific situation in mind though, that I can really think of off the top of my head right now, but you know, it's whenever it's, it's any time after a round when you get to kind of just sit down and have a drink with whoever you're playing with. Cause there's, you know, there's many often times you just play and then you hit the road and it's not always, you know, it's good to kind of just wind down whether you played good or bad, just kind of wind down with them and relax and go over it or talk something else just to get your mind off the game. But no, not, nothing in particular, but it's those special moments right there that uh, always stick out to me. Uh, Michael. Oof. A lot of good cocktails this year. You know, <laughs> quarantine, quarantine's brought us a lot of good cocktails, a lot of great opportunities to consume cocktails and um, <laughs> you know, some, some great, some great settings to do it in. I, you know, when I'm thinking back, what was really, we, uh, there's one day, I think it was like in the end of August, we were in Chicago. I was with a couple of buddies. I was with uh, a couple of guys that you guys don't know. And then Eric and Matt have met the infamous Jaybird. We're out there playing a little golf. And then we came back to my apartment and we got a, uh, we got a keg of Miller Lite. And, you know, we, uh, we put it on the porch out there. We filled it up with ice. Um, COVID restrictions, really, you could only have like, 10 people at that time. I think we had 12. So we didn't even like put a dent in that keg. <laughs> we didn't even put a dent in that keg, but we just had a blast. We like, and we just like, it was ridiculous stuff. We like got limes. We were drinking like Miller light and limes <laughs> and just like, just having ourselves a good time and made some burgers on the grill and some, some dogs and just hung out. And I think that was probably the best setting for me. Like, you know, we played around a golf in the morning and golf course was fine. It was fun. It cost like 35, 40 bucks. And, but then we just kind of parlayed it into a really enjoyable day and, um, you know, had 12 of our, our best friends over the, the apartment and just kind of all hung out and had a couple of drinks and, 
it was definitely just like one hell of a way to spend a Saturday, um, especially in kind of a, a crazy year where you don't get an opportunity to, to have a bunch of people around and really just get together and, you know, hang like you usually do. That was, that was probably the, the best setting I had was drinking that, uh, that keg and Miller light, you know, and all the foam that came out for the first, like Half hour. 40, <laughs> the first 40 drinks that you pour, you know, you, you're getting a whole pitcher of, of foam with that, but yeah, it was a blast, but Eric, can you uh, kind of pinpoint uh, one cocktail or kind of one, one setting that, you know, is pretty fresh in your mind from this year? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go, it was something that we started this year um, that I think will continue over the next year or over the next few years. And it's uh, with a, gr- a group of friends that I play some twilight golf here in Charlottesville with um, at the local municipal course. It's, uh, it's $10 after, after 5 p.m. to play as many holes as you want. Um, and so we'd get out there, especially in the middle of the summer when it's dark and t- it doesn't get dark until 9 o'clock. We'd play as many holes as we could. But the, uh, the ninth hole, it's about 160, 170-yard par three, and uh, we call it the moonshine hole. So oh boy. Uh, <laughs> one of our good buddies that, we, that was in this group is from West Virginia and had some, some access to – to some real moonshine, not the stuff that you can, you can buy in the store that says moonshine on the label, but some real moonshine. Uh, we would, uh, we started this little closest to the pin game where, uh, on the ninth hole, every time we played twilight, whether it was once a week, twice a week, uh, typically we'd be playing in a threesome, um, sometimes a foursome, but, uh, Whoever was furthest away from the pin of the three of us had to take a two ounce shot of moonshine and next had to take a one ounce shot of moonshine. Then whoever was close to the pin was, was free to go and didn't have to, didn't have to go down that road of moonshine. But I would say that was the most, uh, most memorable cocktail on the golf course or anything this summer. And something that, like I said, has carried on after that first time we did it and and probably will carry on every single time we play this golf course, whether it's the twilight round or not. Um, so that is for, for sure a, uh, a pretty cool kind of thing that, that came to be this summer. And as far as cocktails and settings go around golf. Um, but uh, Matt, what about, what, what do you got? I feel like there's something pretty good up your sleeve. I don't know. I mean, the moonshine thing's awesome. I love that. A little, <laughs> like, a little competition action on the ninth hole, twilight, whatever. Like, that's an awesome way to kind of end the night. I love that one, especially the, the real deal stuff. I'm nervous to see how that ends up, but um, uh, that's some good stuff. I like that. I think personally, I mean, you know, with golf usually comes some pretty awesome beers, you know, like those – you know, pre-round beers, mid-round beers at the turn, you know, try to change the game up, whatever, mix it up throughout the day. But I think one of the better beers I had, and this is a little off the road of golf, but kind of relates to it. I mean, you know, they, they do like, you know, certain, you know, social media, whatever, like you see like, you know, top 10 beers, it's like airport beers, whatever, all this stuff. I think my favorite, one of my favorite beers of the year was when we kind of took a trip up to New Hampshire and we went to whatever, what was that uh, restaurant we went to before we met up with Joey? Bubba's. Right on the, what? Bubba's. 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 Dude. <laughs> the, the pre, you know, all weekend beers we had at Bubba's, you know, right on the water in New Hampshire. I mean, granted, it was 42 degrees outside. It wasn't like we were going anywhere near that water. But that that pre-weekend, the like, golf weekend beer at Bubba's was unbelievable. That was, that just set the tone for the yeah. whole weekend. I was really going to join you for that one, boys. <laughs> yeah, I think we we mixed in a, a bowl of chili or two as well. Smart. And yeah, it really just set the tone for what was about to, to happen for the next couple of days there. Yeah, that was that was my that was probably my beer. Like if I had to pick one beer, that one right there set the tone for the next few days and what was an awesome couple of days up there. So that's my All right. Way. And I'm going to we're going to I'm going to run it right back at you, Matt. Ooh, so dude. we're going to expand off. Just the just the cocktail or, or specific setting, whole day is is there a specific day, sunrise to sunset, beyond sunset that uh, that stands out to you from from the year of twenty twenty? I mean, a lot of like, you know, like you said, a lot of golf, a lot of good days out there. But the one for me, I think, would have to be 
the Memorial Day weekend. I think that was the Sunday or maybe – I think it was a Sunday. Whatever day that they did the match with Brady, Peyton, Tiger, and Phil, that day I – th- I think there was a UFC fight on that night too. I don't know. There's a lot. Like, that was like kind of the first weekend with some actual sports to watch and stuff like that. And myself and Prev and Colin Haydu and TJ, who we've mentioned on the show before, and, you know, Prev and Colin obviously have made their appearances. We win. We play Winbury Hills. You know, to kind of treat ourselves. Eh, was it Winbury? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Either Winbury or Fairview Farms. Either way, we we made sure we played like one of the better courses around here that we normally play in Connecticut. And then you know, right from there, get home, shower, reboot, head over to our buddy TJ's. He has an awesome like outdoor patio in the back, outdoor TVs, the whole setup. And you know, it was an awesome round of golf. A pretty decent match we had, and you know, beautiful weather. It was like finally starting to get warm again, you know, for the first time after, you know, the COVID lockdown and, you know, the New England weather of like March and April, where it's like, you know, 61 day and then 40 and or 35 and like almost snowing the next weekend and stuff like that. So first really warm day too, or warm weekend. And we just, I mean, full day, like golf, go back, get some, you know, pizzas or whatever, you know, have some food and watch, you know, Tiger play for the first time in a few months. And, you know, cause especially that was right after they had shut down due to the players or whatever, I think, um, for the PGA Tour. Um, so it was just night, like full day of like not only golf was awesome, but, you know, some post round beers and be able to watch like the match was really, really good. That was probably one of the better ones um, that they've done with that new kind of angle they're taking on. Um, and then, you know, kind of just wrapping it all up with like one full day and it being like that long weekend, just really good vibes and a really good time with some good guys. So that was probably mine. Um Let's see, uh, Mike, what do you got for your full day? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of great days this year with, with a lot of great company. And I think a big part of kind of what are the most memorable days are kind of, you know, what's the golf course that, I mean, sometimes it's not overly important. It's oftentimes it's, it's the people and location that are the most important, but you know, sometimes you just need a day to yourself. And I think my best day this year was a day that, um, I just finished up one of my jobs and had three days off before I was starting my second, my, my next job. Um, so I had three days off and I was just trying to veg out and kind of just do my own thing. And I took a, uh, I took a two hour ride to South Bend, Indiana, um, on one of those days off. And I got up early, drove from Chicago, went, walked around the, the camps at Notre Dame for, you know, for an Irish Catholic, that's kind of the pilgrimage to to go and kind of just hang out on campus it's it's a really cool vibe there and um you know so did that for a little bit and i uh, treated myself to a chipotle i got guac so what mm-hmm. what a day uh and then in the afternoon i grinded on my golf game i went to the warren course which hosted the 2019 u.s senior open so absolutely great golf course uh steve stricker took the cake on that that one i think he battled jerry kelly down the stretch and it cost me 45 bucks to play you know a course that they play the u.s senior open on um after one o'clock so i I worked on my game for a while great practice facilities and put it around for a while and then i i teed it up i was planning on teeing up by myself and another guy came was kind of hitting balls near me and he ended up joining me so we walked 18 holes out there and you know really great tests cool layout with a bunch of different just all different types of holes and really good architecture as well. And some good par threes, I think were kind of what I remember as being, um, you know, the most interesting ones out there, but it was just, it was just a great day. I think it was like 95 degrees and it was just hot as hell, but it was just, it was just enjoyable to be out there and just do something you like to do. I, you know, I'd play golf in the snow. I'd play golf. It's 150 degrees. I love being out there and it was just nice to kind of do something you enjoy and ended up having some great company, even without even, you know, planning on it. And, just enjoying a, a day on the golf course and all the, all the things that came with it. So Eric, can you kind of think of, uh, you know, a full day that was, uh, the best of the year for you? Yeah, I think, um, I don't know, for, for me, I think it's a, it's a pretty easy answer. Uh, as you guys know, it's not, not everybody may know. I, uh, took a little pilgrimage down to Pinehurst, uh, about, about two months ago now for, for my 25th birthday. And kind of, it was a, it was a spur of the moment thing, decided to, to go down and uh, spend three, four days at, in, in Pinehurst um, by myself, similar to, to you, Mike, with your, uh, 
your trip to South Bend by your, it really was like one of the, one of the best things I've ever done in my life, just going there by myself and, and spending some time, um, yes, by myself, but around people that I've never met before. And through all of that, I, I met some people that had, had great stories really like, I, I mean, I was texting someone that I played golf with there this morning. Um, but in specifically the, the one day, uh, it was October 26th in the, in the morning, I had a, a 8, 10 tee time at mid pines, um, which I've talked before is my favorite golf course in the world that I've ever played. Um, had an 8, 10 AM tee time on, on Monday, the 26th, and then, uh, flipped it over in the afternoon to, to the cradle at Pinehurst resort. Um, Not a bad the bird. cradle is, is something that I, I think everybody who's ever held a golf club in their hands needs to experience, um, especially at three, four o'clock in the afternoon on a nice day. It is, it is a setting and an experience that no place can match. Um, and that it's just so hard to explain unless you've experienced it. But I mean, you're walking 200 yards from the 18th green of Pinehurst number two, and you've got this area where there's rock and roll music blasting. You've got a cocktail in your hands. You can take your shoes off if you want. You can play with one club <clears throat> in a six sim and it's acceptable and it's, it's promoted, honestly. Um, so I would say that is the, the, the best day I had this year in 2020. Um, and it does heavily revolve around golf. Um, but going from one of my favorite golf courses, probably my favorite golf course I've ever played in my life to experiencing the cradle for the first time. Um, and similar to you, Mike, I played, uh, played the cradle in, uh, in a six sum actually, um, with five guys I'd never met before in my life. Um, <laughs> and I think, uh, I think of the six of us, four of us were all in Pinehurst on our own. That's it awesome. was, uh, it was a pretty cool experience. Uh, like I said, some, some guys that I, I probably will, will play golf with again in the future. Um, so definitely something that stands out to me, something that I'll never forget um, going forward. And um, reason that makes, uh, makes like Pinehurst so special and um, some of the spur of the moment golf trips that, that we all have done so special um but uh joey is there uh a day in uh in 2020 that sticks out to you yeah um i mean i i think you guys also know where i'm going with this one i would definitely say when obviously when you boys made up may came and made the trip up to visit me in new hampshire but you know along with that not just that one day in particular but you know, I had my brother and my dad visit me another day. So that was something that was really special. And I had our good buddy Hairball. He came up and visited me for a day as well. So any days like that when I, you know, because unfortunately with me, I'm not as able to get out and, you know, do these day trips that I would like. Um, so, I mean, I, it meant a lot to me to get, you know, have everyone like, especially you guys coming all the way and visiting me. So, I mean, that day in particular that, you know, with all of us, I think we can do, you know, kind of go over it now. But, uh, you know, started the nice mor morning with a nice little hike. You know, it took a lot longer than we expected it to, and it beat the shit crap out of us. Um, uh, beat the shit out of me. I'll go. Uh, <laughs> it, it was as soon as we got to the top, it was well worth it. And the, and the walk down is never as bad as a walk up. You know, afterwards, we we, uh, we wrapped that hike up, got a little bit of uh, some breakfast in us at Tucker's, one of the uh, main staples of Newberry, New Hampshire. So uh, glad you guys got to enjoy that. But then uh, we enjoyed a nice long day of golf. You know, a lot of drinks were flowing that day. Uh, some putts weren't made, some putts were made, some shots were hit, and the whole course was seen. And like I said, I, I, I was very happy that you guys were able to make a trip and come see the course. And Mikey, I know you've seen it before, but... I'm glad you got to experience it with us because, uh, you know, I feel like it's different from going from a tournament and kind of just experiencing it with your friends and, you know, having a lot more range of being able to play it rather than, you know, the strict rules that comes along with a tournament or anything like that. So I would definitely say that was 
one of the better days of 2020 for sure. Weekends for that matter, but that that day in particular was uh, that was a good time. Yeah, no, that was a blast. I can, I would even say, kind of being more pointed about it too. Like my favorite part of that day and that round, outside of the the cold brew from Tucker's Flames, you know, put that in my veins. <laughs> get, get get me an IV drip. I think the the cold, I think I had like walnut, cold walnut. Brew that day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that stuff was fire. Besides that, I think, you know, we played our normal round and then we kind of went out for our extra kind of emergency nine and then played those additional holes. And we, you know, we went up a couple of tees and, you know, we, we changed up the hole. I, you know, one hole that we played might've been 400 the first time we played it. Then we played it from like three thirty, and, you know, we're hitting driver into kind of a tight little spot and we're making more birdies. And so I think that was, that was probably even the, the, for me, just being more pointed about the day that was, that was probably the best part for me. You know, I get, we got to see the golf course in all different directions and, you know, it turned out to be pretty nice during the day, but then by the end I could barely feel my hands. Cause it was like, yeah, it gets cold 35. <laughs> it was like 35. Yeah. So it was just a blast. The day was awesome. Yeah, I was, I was so not ready for, for that quick t- change of temperature, like between <laughs> 4 PM and 6 PM. It was a 20 degree difference. And I was coming from, from September in Virginia, where it's still 90 degrees. And uh, I was in, I was in a world of hurt when it came to 6 p.m. both days. <laughs> yeah, it, it goes quickly there, that's for sure. As soon as that <laughs> sun goes around that mountain, you better have a pullover to put on. Yeah, I mean, but we, uh, what we, I think we played like 60 holes in about 24 hours. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, luckily, I mean, we were as a, 18 in the morning. I only had to join you for nine, but. Yeah. As a group, we were, we were in, we were in New Hampshire for what, like three days, two nights. Mm. Um, you guys picked me up at the airport in Manchester around like noon on, on Sunday and we left to late Tuesday afternoon. So, um, I'd say that was, that was a pretty good trip as far as, uh, time to golf ratio goes. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> The full day of golf on Saturday, like I think, like Mikey said, right? We first round out there. We and we we went relatively early in the morning. I feel like I don't know, right, pretty yeah, probably like eleven or twelve. We teed off, I would think. Uh, maybe, yeah. yeah. So like nothing too crazy, but like you know, we get out there and we played it. Initially, we played it at like its longest, right? We played it tipped out. We're like let's just see what yeah. she's got, and it beat us up pretty good. I mean, it's it's there's that's a real that's a real golf course, you know. Like we added a lot of long irons a lot of like good drivers if you're going to hit a driver because like yeah. a lot of a lot of places you can get in trouble out there but really good course and i think we ran it back and played almost almost another full 18 18 i feel like yeah, yeah, I played I played 30 30 holes nine, more like emergency 14 <laughs> something like that yeah like 13, 14 <laughs> we just played until it got dark yeah <laughs> yeah stretch so, out full 31 holes or whatever and then the next day Another 18 right back yeah. at it. A little colder that next morning, a little frost delay, I believe. Oh, yeah. Exactly, yeah, that hurt. First group off. It was big time. I forgot about that, actually. That's yeah. why I got to play now. Like you we said, were the first group off the next day after the frost delay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we have a couple more days like that. I'd love for you boys to come back up, and I'd love to try to show you some other courses around that area. I mean, you got Lake Sunapee Country Club right down the road, which – it's okay, you know, but it's it's worth the play, I would say. There's a nice little public course called Newport Golf Club. Very run down, but it's it's a fun little layout. I actually really enjoyed playing there. Membership's like 600 bucks. I'm thinking about messing around and uh, joining next year. <laughs> um, yeah, like, um, I mean, so, we, yeah, what's up? So what I was going to kind of go into there is, I mean, in a year where like travel was so limited and a lot of people's vacations got canceled and stuff like that. Um, this was a trip that we hadn't planned until, I don't know, we planned it in July and we went in September, I think. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, and it turned out to be one of the best golf trips all of us have been on. Um, and it was, it was kind of a, keep it simple type of trip like let's stay in an airbnb in the middle of the nowhere in the mountains uh we'll play as much golf as we can um go grocery shopping eat some good food drink some good wine 
um, and just really kind of enjoy the, the company of each other. Um, but I think from all of that, we, we all learned going forward, like what we want to get out of these golf trips. Um, I think we had such a good time sitting on that back porch of the Airbnb that we were sitting, that we stayed in drinking some bourbon, sitting by the fire, just shooting the shit, talking about whatever it was, talking about girls, talking about golf, talking about politics, what really whatever it was. I think every topic came up that, that first night that we were in that house. Um, and I don't know, I think collectively going forward, I don't, I don't, I don't think I will personally ever stay in a hotel on a golf trip going forward no way yeah again in the culture you yeah gotta, like for like, a resort or i mean it yeah it's it's fun to go go out to dinner sometimes especially if you're on a longer trip but like the trip that we were on three nights um we ourselves dinner every night and um i think we really kind of took advantage of the time and the space that we had and i don't know joey you kind of being the one that lived there and not having to travel for that trip or even Mike and Matt, you guys just kind of uh, driving a couple hours North for that trip. You can add a little bit different perspective. I mean, I uh, coming from Virginia traveled a little bit further for the trip and still, I mean, by far the the best few days I had all year. Um, I don't know, Matt, do you, do you, is there anything that sticks out to you from that weekend or um, kind of the house that we stayed in or, Apart from the golf, the, the what stands out to you about that trip? Yeah, like you said, I think for me personally, that's the first time I've done a golf trip where it's an Airbnb kind of style, and I loved it. I think – I don't know if it was just luck of the draw or whatever, but that place we stayed at with that little back patio that they had with that view kind of overlooking the mountains and everything, like huge backyard, it just – it was honestly just perfect. Like it was just – so like an awesome like gorgeous views and everything like that and just really made you feel like you know you're in New Hampshire you know you're here to play golf and you know you're you're in New Hampshire not just in like a Marriott you know (laughs) like I don't know it just felt different it made you feel kind of more like on a trip or like that you actually were stepping away getting away whatever it is and like I mean I don't know that first night with like we had like you said we had some bourbon going we were cooking dinner on the grill and made a little fire out back it was a little cooler like late September night in New Hampshire and like uh, I felt like I was Chris Stapleton. Like the the view we were at, I felt like I was about to write a song or something. Like it just with the whiskey flowing and like all this stuff. It just I don't know. It just was such an awesome vibe. And like you know, we all haven't been in the same room together in probably since college, right? I mean, it's been a long time since we've all been together in person. So like you said, we talked about you know we hit all the main food groups, right? Hit all those topics, and it's like it was just that first night especially we haven't even played golf yet right it was just so awesome to like catch up with everybody talk in person you text here and there whatever it's just not the same you know and like be in that awesome of an environment and like just be when something about being in that place that we were at just felt like you're just kind of step you're stepping away you just felt like you're excluded from the world and the nonsense and you're just like you're there to just like be present and like you know you know whatever it is and just like enjoy time that you're having right there with you know the four of us so I I thought that weekend was awesome and just of the environment we were in and, you know, just the, the golf was just kind of something to keep us busy and, you know, but like it was, it was just a really good weekend, like all through and through the Airbnb thing is something I will absolutely be doing going forward on golf trips as much as I can. I, I thought that was, that honestly set the tone for the whole weekend. and It was awesome. It's about the only choice you have in New Hampshire. I don't think they even have hotels in that state. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Mike, a hotel, what's that? <laughs> so, so Mike, if um, same topic, the, the trip to New Hampshire, um, you you had kind of already escaped Chicago and living in the city. Um, you had gone to Massachusetts. You were working from home at your parents' place in Massachusetts, but. Um, what did that trip kind of provide for you in a year where living in a in one of the biggest cities in the country in the world of COVID um, with so many things locked down, what did that trip kind of provide to you? 
Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, kind of when you lay it out like that, it's, it's interesting to think about, um, you know, kind of run the gamut this year, living in Chicago, I think it's the biggest city in the, in the country outside of New York and LA. And we were locked down pretty good and really only saw, you know, a small group of people throughout the, throughout the time that I was there this year. Um, and I was there the majority of it, probably, you know, six months or so. So of the nine months of, of quarantine um, and then spending some time at home at Mass, in Massachusetts as well. But yeah, you know, I think that weekend kind of provided me an opportunity to, and I think Matt hit on it, just kind of disconnect, you know, yeah. I think even working in a remote environment, you have an opportunity, you really never disconnect. You know, I, I feel like since I've graduated college and, you know, started full-time jobs that, you know, I'm kind of always latched to my phone. You know, did someone send me a, an email? Did someone send me a message? Like do you know, do I need to get something out the door before the end of the night? And that was kind of something that we had put on the calendar. And we said, Hey, we're going to go somewhere where we know we don't have a whole lot of cell service and we're just gonna, and Matt said it great again, you know, just be present. I think it was an opportunity for me to, you know, Matt and I spent some time just driving up to the uh, Manchester airport. So we got some, you know, one-on-one time on that piece and we got to hang out. Um, And then we picked up you and, you know, neither of us had seen you in a while. And then we had, 45 minutes of kind of catching up on your life that was going on and us kind of just sitting in the back seat, you know, then we get to Bubba's great staff at Bubba's just set the tone. I mean, borderline the nicest waitress I've ever met in my entire life. She moved us like four times so that we could see the football game. And we were just like, you know, happy as clams having our seafood chowder and IPAs and stuff. So, and then, you know, then Joey showed up, you know, he was worn down after a long day at the course and working and what, do we do when he shows up we make an amazing dinner on the back porch and, and um drinks some four roses single like i think it was four roses small batch yeah. out there and you know shout out to the stars in uh new hampshire that we had a really good night for the stars that first night um so that real. was kind of fun and i can't remember the last time i like looked was looking up at the stars or anything no, so that was you know it's that just kind of shows you how present we were that that like, Oh yeah, we weren't I mean, really we worrying got, about the other things. We were we, just like we took like a like a three hundred yard box. Yeah, it was, it was a different. World we had a better view at the stars. Yeah, <laughs> the place yeah. is unbelievable. Again, like I said, yeah. No. I swear to God, if you put Chris Stapleton on that patio that night, he writes a whole another album. Eric, <laughs> those guys. Oh yeah, that scene, dude. That oh, like, yeah. that when when I hear some of the stuff they sing about in their songs, that's what I picture. Like just con- like you're just in the country. It's just. There's no nonsense. It's just woods, just woods, the stars. Yeah. And we mm-hmm. got fire going. Like, it was just the best. Joey brought, like, you know, a quick yeah. pack of, like, mini cigars he was working on after work. Just, you know, like, fight off the buzz, whatever it is. <laughs> and, the day, and the weekend, get ready to play some golf the next day. A couple, little bit of bourbon. I mean, it was, like Mike said, just the best way to disconnect. And honestly, for me, since COVID, that was probably the first time I really – you know, like Mike said, like got away, like really just unplugged whatever it was. And it was awesome. And you guys know me, I'm like, just tell me when to show up and I'll be there. I'm not a big planner of these things. Like you and Mike, like Eric and Mikey did all the planning and, you know, worked it all out with Joey to make sure like he was off at least a day or two to hang out with us and whatnot. And they just tell me, all right, we're going this day. And you, you're, you pick me up here. I'll pick you up there, whatever it is. It's like, all right, easy enough guys. I'll drive. Like, let's do it. Like, and it was honestly probably the best trip I've gone on golf related in a long time for sure it was awesome i mean even uh, even uh, living there it's even you know you guys coming it was still a way for me same thing just to kind of disconnect you know i mean i go home and i do my same routine every night something like that so to finally go and do something different because i'm in new hampshire with no friends it was nice to actually have friends for once and go do something so you know, for me, it was that same idea, just kind of get away from everything that I'm used to. And granted, we played golf at my course. I mean, it, it was just a good way to kind of escape work for a little bit, even though I was still at work, as weird as that may sound. Yeah. And I, think, I, don't know, I, I think the uh, this this trip to New Hampshire that we made in September is what like unconsciously started building um it's what started kind of this this whole conversation stuff that we appreciate about golf stuff that we appreciate as a friend group um 
And before we even realized that, that that trip to nature really is what solidified the start to, to something like bogey proof. Um, and in a year like, like this past year, being able to go on a trip like, like we did, uh, I think, uh, I don't know. It was, it was, it made it even that much more special. And we probably gone on that trip if COVID weren't a thing or whatever, but I don't think it, I don't know that it would have been as special as it was for us. Um, it really was like, like Matt, you said, it was, it was an escape for all of us for, for a few days and, really just to be able to spend some, some genuine time with each other, spending some, some great time playing golf and doing something that we loved with some, some people that we care about. Um, and kind of transitioning that into, we've talked a lot about 2020, our recap of 2020 and this time of year, it's, it's Christmas time and, and a time that a lot of us spend with family. And last episode, we talked about golf and, and family and the relationship between golf and our family. Um, but to have a little bit more fun with it, I guess. Um, I mean, growing up, everybody writes like Christmas wish lists to Santa. Um, like what, what, what are the 10 things that I want from Santa this year? Um, and I would say, I mean, even, for, I mean, for me, at least for probably all of us, golf was probably a pretty heavily focused thing on those Christmas lists. Um, so if you were to, uh, I'll start with you again, Mr. Mr. Professional Joey, if you were to, uh, if you were to, to take your, take your current self, pretend you're 13 years old in, in the year 2020, and you're writing writing a Christmas list to Santa. What are the top two items? Putting green. On your Christmas. I'll get I'll get more specific than that. Not just the top two items. So we're gonna go. What is the 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 one golf item that is gonna be on your Christmas list? And what is the one alcohol related item that is gonna be on your Christmas 13. list? Thirteen. I can't have alcohol. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we'll go. We'll, we'll change the question up then a little bit. 13 year old Joey as a golfer and 21 year old Joey as, as, a, as a, as a, as a drinker. All right. So as I kind of blurted, as you were asking the question, 13 year old Joe, grand 13 year old Joe was not a golfer at the time, but per se he was, I would definitely say a putting green because one, that means I'm up in New York where winters obviously can't really do much involving golf. So be a good way to kind of practice a game at that age and I'd be a lot better putter now if I had that opportunity but here we are as far as alcohol goes number number two when I once uh so you're saying when I'm 21 would my alcohol gift be or like Give right now any any age over the age of 21 for legal reasons. I mean if you're saying my first year is 21 I would have just said a 30 pack of bush lot or bush uh bush classics but uh he asked me now. I mean, I, I wouldn't ask for anything. Any, I would just ask for a nice bottle of Maker's Mark. That's about it. That's all I need. I got ice and I got a glass. And that, that's the farther extent that I really need a, that I could think of as far as an alcohol related gift. But uh, yeah. Glad that you're doing well, Joe, and you got your own <laughs> ice. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Thank you. Matt, you do have, do you have ice. ice? <laughs> <laughs> It's a little thing. <laughs> it's the little things. All right. So, uh, so yeah. after after Joey like really evaluated that question, we're gonna we're gonna twist it a little bit for Matt, Mike, and myself's answer. Current self, golf, oh, golf Christmas present and alcohol Christmas present. Joey, I'm sorry that you were the you were the only one that had to answer the prior version, but <laughs> I'm trying to think what I don't even know what I would ask for now as a Christmas, like a golf Christmas gift. I just buy myself. Answers would probably be the same. So, yeah. I mean, I have a putting green already. I literally was looking at it, and that's what made me think of my answer. Um, so, there's that. But yeah, continue, boys. Let's so, see what Matt, what do we got? 
All right. If I'm going with like an alcohol present, I'm kind of going to be on the same bandwagon as Joe here. Like, you know, these days, can you expand it a little bit? I'm into some wines now. I'm into beer, you know, treehouse, all that fun stuff. But like, I'm really starting to branch into the whiskey land, like bourbon world. Like I'm, I'm finally getting there. I'm finally getting to that stage of my life where that's, you know, that's the stuff I'm looking for. So I'm going to probably try and go for, you know, some kind of like high-end whiskey that I haven't had before. I've had like Gentleman Jack and kind of like, I think I've had like the Sinatra version of Jack too. Like I've kind of hit the, the Jacks, right? So that's like a big thing in my family, big Jack Daniels family. But um, I'm probably going to go with some kind of higher end bourbon or something like that. Something that I haven't had before. So I'm new to try. And then if we're going for a golf thing, I'm going to actually go back to the original question for this one. Cause I actually think I remember exactly what I put on my 13 year old Christmas list. And it was the maybe uh, 13 might be a little, but the Nike ignite driver, that, <laughs> that thing was the second. I mean, I was a tiger fanboy from day one and I had just got in into like, you know, finally grown a little bit and getting out of the junior sets at that time. And I was like, Nike Ignite driver. I think I put, I think it was the only thing I put on my Christmas list when I was 13. I got it. Like shout out Santa. I got it. I'm Santa. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, the Nike Ignite driver was number one for me. And I like, I haven't been that excited about a particular golf club probably since then. Um, if I don't think I'd even have a request right now, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not a big equipment change guy. I got kind of what I need it until something falls off the wagon or starts getting too beat up. Probably going to stick to what I got for a little while. So golf wise right now, I don't have a ton of requests. Um, so I think I'm going to go back to the 13 year old one. I'm Nike Ignite driver is the, is the uh, key. Mikey, what do you got before we go back to Eric? Yeah. Um, great choice on your end. I think any, you know, decent bottle of bourbon is definitely high up on my list this year i'm excited to get back to chicago because i got a couple on my bar waiting for me so i'm ready to get back into that but i think as far as alcohol goes i i think and you know i'm i'm kind of gonna put it on my own christmas list with heading down to charlottesville to see eric i'm just i want to go and have a couple from a couple local wineries i'm gonna go to king's family um gonna go to dave matthews there the one that starts the b blenheim or cool. something i think is and then i think trump's is right across there as well so you know my christmas present to myself is just going to be probably getting a case worth of wine you know a handful of bottles at each place and just bringing that back to me with chicago and sharing it with with some friends at you know having some nice dinners and you know just having some good bottles of wine and hanging out as far as golf goes who uh I need, I mean, I need a whole new driver swing, driver work. The driver itself is great. Um, you know, quality, um, you know, Callaway Maverick, six months old, but I just need a new swing. Um, Same Mikey. Same. <laughs> and to, in, to improve that, uh, you know, a more reasonable thing, because, you know, the golf thing, golf swing takes some time. I would, uh, I would want some sessions with like a TPI personal trainer, just to like work on some of the things that I know, um, would help me physically and would definitely improve my golf swing. Like I know I was chatting with my uncle, I was working on my game this morning um, and, you know, just working on core strength and working on leg strength and some shoulder flexibility, I think would really improve my golf game a lot. So, you know, maybe I'll treat myself in, in January and get in there and have a couple um, workouts with, with someone who really knows and knows how, you know, the body works specifically to the golf swing. So that's probably what's on my list. Eric, what are you, uh, it looked like, you know, for those listening on the podcast, Eric poured himself a drink of, uh, his Christmas present. So, you know, what would you be, what would you be asking for from Santa? Um, so to answer that question, uh, my Christmas present from, from Santa, uh, we talked about on the last episode, it was, it was Blanton's and that wasn't what I just poured myself. I just poured myself a little bit of Elijah Craig, um, but to, to answer the question that we all have, have just been talking about, I'll start with the, uh, with the golf item. I think I'm going to go all in in 2021 on the, uh, on the mid-am life, and I'm going to get a push cart. Yeah. Oh, boy. Not, not just a push cart. Yeah. I'm going to get a walker trolley. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Those- <laughs> Push Those cart. things are 
are incredible. It, it is the most like classy, simple, like, I don't know. If you were to, if you were to take, take mid amateur and put it into a push cart, it's, it's Walker trolley. <laughs> I believe like that's you're not that's allowed that's to be a division one. You're not allowed to be a division one golf because they're too, they're, they're too nice. You better, so you better be like a plus two by the time that thing gets frequently used. I need, you need to be a, uh, to be using a push oh. or put whatever the Walker trolley <laughs> we're talking. <laughs> 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 so I think, I think to, you, I think you can use a uh, use a push cart. Like I think plus two is like the the maximum that you can use a push cart. I think if you're more than that, then you're not allowed to use a push cart. But then also the other side of it, you can't be more than like a a three. Yeah, it's a very fine thing you got to be in. It's a very exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I'm I think I'm pretty comfortably in that window where when I'm exploring the push cart market. I've got a lot of options. <laughs> oh, Lord. The market. <laughs> oh, 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 man. There's the, the rolling hills of Virginia will get you if you're going to walk every round. <laughs> I get that. I get that. Oh. <laughs> All right. Fair. Um, In a certain situation. Well, I, tough look. I don't know. There's no way around it. Some. Obviously, there's a time and place. Like, if you're getting those twilight rounds in, push card all day. I'm about it. Get as much golfing as you can. Sometimes it just it doesn't hit right. I don't know. I, I'm still – I still haven't made that switch yet where I'm like, yeah, I'll get one. I'd, I'll just pay for a cart, honestly. It's, it's either I'm walking or I'll pay for the cart. I don't know. <laughs> I, haven't, I personally haven't gotten to that point in my life where I'm comfortable enough – with myself to get a push cart. I guess that's where we're yeah, at. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm teetering. I'm teetering on the edge right now of the push cart mafia. Yeah. I think once though, like you said, like you're, it's your mid am life, right? So I think once you start playing in more serious events like that, you're not going to get a caddy every time you play in an event, you know, like it's just not what it is anymore. Exactly. So I think it, it plays yeah. in certain situations. I'll, I'll give it to you there. It definitely plays in the right situation. Just exactly. You can't go crazy with that no. thing. Can't be using that every day. <laughs> you need to, no. You need to look your. You need to do yourself a favor and look up the the Walker trolley because right. the thing is thing thing is pretty pretty awesome. Um, it's not one of those like I don't even know what the brands are that make the uh, like the four wheelers or the three wheeler carts that like have an umbrella stand and like the trolley. All it's got to it is three wheels, like the handle and like a tiny little like. Ouch. basket and it's that's it's what, that's cool what they practice. have at uh winter park for everyone yeah that's yeah winter cool. park has them and yeah, my brother like i just said my brother got a nice <laughs> he got a nice four-wheel push cart this summer and i keep making fun of him i should have gotten some spinners for the uh wheels that would have been funny <laughs> <laughs> um but to uh to continue on the on the on the question um the if I were to put on my Christmas list something alcohol related, it would probably be a bottle of uh, Sweetens Cove bourbon. Oh, they make their own bourbon too. I didn't even so, know. Exactly. So we we've, we've talked a little bit about Sweetens Cove and how cool of a place Sweetens Cove is, and Peyton being one of the biggest investors and stuff like that. And I mean, it's in the South. Um, there's not a lot of alcohol in the South that's more prominent than whiskey. And uh, they, they started their own label. It's a very small batch. Um, it's just called Sweetens Cove Bourbon out of Tennessee. Um, that, would be, that would be the number one on my Christmas list for alcohol. Um, it's an extremely hard bottle to get. I mean, I don't even know how, how much it costs at this point. Probably, probably way, way out of my tax bracket, but uh, <laughs> that would be, that would be what is on my, uh, my Christmas list for, uh, for this year. Um, I don't know. I think we're uh, kind of wrapping it up, wrapping up 2020. Um, Mike, is there, I don't know, anything as we, as we transition into 2021, 
um, anything that you can preview for, for anybody, some of our goals for 2021 or something that we're looking forward to, uh, to putting together for everybody for 2021. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think we have, we have a lot of great ideas here at, at bogey proof. And I think, you know, baseline, we want to just continue to, to grow these podcasts and, you know, be more consistent about, you know, having an episode come out, you know, we haven't quite decided what that's going to be. Hopefully, you know, it's, it's every week and we're really diversified as far as, you know, doing some friends of the programs and, and chatting, you know, more specifically pro golf, and then maybe having some more episodes where, where we really chat, you know, alcohol and dive into, you know, maybe some locations that have great wineries or some, you know, if we have a, a new brewery or something that pops up near one of us, maybe, you know, someone goes and takes a trip and then we kind of do a deep dive on that and kind of just learn more about the industries as a whole. Um, and then I think we, we want to get a little bit more into the, the gambling side too, I think in 2021. So like we mentioned on last um, week's episode, um, if you go on our, you know, bogeyproofblog.com and, and put your name and your email down right on the, on the main site there, you'll be signed up for, um, you know, our monthly bogey proof picks, um, which each month we're going to be putting out a, you know, a focused, it's going to be just probably a one or two page PDF. And, you know, we're going to highlight each of the, the tournaments that are coming up and give you some inside scoops and talk about the golf courses and the fields and um, just kind of just make a couple, uh, you know, a couple hot takes and, you know, give you, you know, well, maybe we'll pair a cocktail. Like, you know, I know we miss my, my, my Koba but you know maybe we would have done like a, a some sort of special like tequila sunrise or something recipe that's like hey when you're watching Mayakoba you know make this drink on Saturday morning and it's, you know it'll just make your day that much better Go by so, yeah so yeah so fun stuff like that so you know just con- continuing to grow across all platforms podcast YouTube Instagram um you know Twitter Fontaine in the Twitter trenches so <laughs> yeah so you know <laughs> go put your name in there and uh for bogey proof picks and just kind of consistently pushing out content and you know we want people to interact with us if there's things that you guys want to hear um for those listening or you know those that follow us on twitter you know slide into our dms you know or you know follow us on instagram and you know let's get some chatter back and forth i think we're as good as the people that surround us um you know so tell us things that you guys want to hear about and you know we'll do segments on it we'll do deep dives we'll bring you on um, I think friends of the program has been a great hit thus far and want to bring more people on and teach them about golf and teach them about life. And, um, you know, kind of where all that melds together. So yeah, excited for 2021, Eric. And, um, you know, just excited to, to spend more time with you guys. You know, hopefully we can do it in a, you know, in, in a real world setting sometime, uh, soon, but you know, zoom will have to do for now and, uh, cheers boys. I appreciate you guys hopping on. It was great chatting. Absolutely. Another good talk, boys. Cheers. Cheers. Happy holidays. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Talk to you all in the uh, coming days. We'll have to uh, start brainstorming for 2021. Don't do anything I wouldn't do.